Leos! Subscribe! What up, players? Warboss Tay up in this mood. Today, I'm looking at some Dark Elf art from Warhammer Online, Age of Reckoning. Dark Elf Sorceress. To which I give the thumbs up. Because I'm gonna use it as inspiration for when I'm painting this. Today's unboxing episode is on the Dark Elf Supreme Sorceress. So let's get us a little bit of a close up there. This is what the figure looks like. Took it out of the clamshell with the sprue already. Just so we would be able to look at it easier. So you can see if you are zero to three years old and you're watching this video, this model is not for you. It was released with the Storm of Magic expansion for Warhammer Fantasy Battle, which just came out this past weekend. And I was looking at the figure and I thought I'd type up in my search engine Dark Elf Sorceress to see, you know, what else was out there. And I found this great artwork, super hot. And as you can tell, it's not, she, I'm not sure how, how saturated and washed out the color is, but the skin tone isn't that much different from normal, from like a normal human being. I guess, you know what, it kind of is. Wow, 2007, really? Because I'm looking at it outside of the camera and it, it looks like it's appearing a lot paler and more Deneb stony. Don't look at me like that. So let's take a look at the sprue, shall we? What we've got here is one half sprue, just like all of the other Storm of Magic releases. And there's only one way that you can put this thing together. Here's a decorative base. And let's take a look at the instructions. So all the parts are labeled and it's labeled as to what should go what, what should, what's the order you should do it. So, number one, the legs need, should be attached to the torso, two, then attach the arm, three, four, the hair, five, the other part of the hair, and six, her little, her little minxy face. So what we're gonna do is put it together now, and we're going to see what it looks like all assembled. Here's one last look at the sprue. As in all the other unboxing videos I've done, if you haven't seen them yet, go check them out for the Chaos Sorcerer Lord and the Vampire Counts Necromancer that were also released during the Storm of Magic expansion. There is only one way you can really fit everything together. Everything is built in such a way that the angles seem to be really specific to how they all need to go. So I'm going to see if I can fiddle with it at all to see if I can get a different kind of a pose because you know I, I'm I'm not a conformist I don't like things going the way they're supposed to so I want to try and see if I can come up with a little bit more of an individual pose than this if not then you know I'll take it because it's such a great model anyway but we'll see how it looks when we get back all right check it out I'm almost done gluing this girl together but what you're gonna find really interesting for anybody who gets this is that her hair comes in three pieces. So you've got the main part that's on the torso, right? And then you gotta glue these two side pieces on. And first I was like, what? But then I realized that it makes it really, it, it really gives it some, some more thickness and I guess volume. And I, I guess when they sculpt it, they're able to add more detail if they do it in separate pieces. So each little section of the hair can be more detailed. So I'm about to glue in the last little part of it. And when I do, it should fit in something like, like that. I'll show, I'll show you when, when this thing is all glued up, but it's just crazy. And if you've never done this before, if, if you don't have this figure yet, then it's definitely gonna throw you for a loop for a second before you figure it out. All right, we'll be right back. All right, here she is, all built up and ready for the paint. And I really am loving all the detail that they got onto this model. With, like I said, the strands of hair, the face, the 
jewelry, the the motion of the hair, and then the 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 cloth. Just looks really good. Which it should, I mean after Lelith Hesperax, you know, every female model they come out with is gonna be judged next to that, so so good job, Games Workshop. Thank you for following through with the Sorceress. Let's take a look at one of the older Dark Elf models now. I've got here a Dark Elf Executioner. And I know this is in, in with the old, but let's just take a look at the height. The height is the same. Just about the same. Add some detail with the chainmail. The sword has that typical dark elf evil curviness to it. And dark elf curves on the breastplate and in the armors, armor plates. You can see that they, they kept a lot of this for what they did with the dark Eldar design. Spiky, spiky bits and curves and everything is reminiscent of these older models. Yep. So there you have it. We're gonna take away the Supreme Sorceress now, get some paint on her, and we'll see when that's done. And we're back. Welcome to the last part of our video. So let's take one more look at the Supreme Sorceress on the cover of the clamshell, the artwork, or the, the picture, and let's look at what I did. So as you can see, I kept most of the color palette the same. I even went with, this was my second try at the non-metallic metal, and I feel like I'm improving a little bit from the last time, but I think there's still more I can do, but I'm really pleased with the way the gold turned out, like for for her armor and for the staff as well and her head armor piece it's all non-metallic paints I used I think Tau Sept Ochre, Scorched Brown, Snake Bite Leather and Skull White just mixed in various quantities and built up over some several different layers to make it look like gold without having any metallic paints to work with and I think it turned out pretty well Still gonna keep practicing. Like I said, that's only my second attempt. And I was basing it off of the clamshell artwork as well as the pictures on the GW site. The skin tone is a nice, healthy skin tone, I think. It's, it doesn't look alien or otherworldly. It looks almost human, which is a quality that I love. And I got this effect by doing Denim Stone washed down with Ogren Flesh and then highlighted back up. No Talern Flesh, no pinker reds or oranges in the pigment, just this pale Denim Stone color washed with the Ogren Flesh and then highlighted back up. So I think it came out pretty well. The hair, like I said, was in three pieces, which allows it to have all these crazy strand work to make it look like the wind is blowing it from behind. The only thing they don't tell you when you're building it is that it's almost impossible to get inside to paint underneath here. So if you're planning on doing a different color other than black, you're going to need to do that first so it doesn't interfere, or like get all over the rest of your model while you're painting. And here's the staff. Again, it's got some little lightning bolts on it, but these are a little bit subtler than the Zinch staff for the Zinch sorcerer and you can tell it's even even on the the artwork here it's really subtle it's not very overpowering at all but I'm, I'm pretty proud of the way that she turned out I'm very happy with the result and I started yesterday I started making these videos yesterday had to leave to to go to work today and come back and I just finished her now so 
you know, for the the amount of time I spent on her, I would say that when I started these videos, only doing the painting and assembly, I think it was about maybe two, three, three hours. That's probably probably up to four because of the the non-metallic metal. So yeah, I liked it. I really had a great time with her and. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's take one more look at the, the artwork that I really use as an inspiration. This is the Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning concept art for the Dark Elf Sorceress and man I wish I had a PC and not a Mac because some of the artwork I found was really cool. The, the different character models and, and the different just the, the, the concept art for not only the Dark Elves, but the, the Warriors of Chaos and stuff. Some of the concept art looks so awesome. But this is definitely really, really well done and really nicely made. And congratulations to the studio for making a Dark Elf that doesn't look just crazy and evil, but actually quite stunning and captivating and still have that dark and deadly look to her, which is what I think my model kind of turned out. So let's take one last look at her before we go. And thanks again for watching. The eyes were kind of hard to paint on this one because the right eye was giving me a little bit trouble. I had to keep going in and painting it black and doing it again. So it, it looks like you can't really see the pupil pupils too well but it looks like she's looking up into the left a little bit at what whatever she's gesturing at so I think combined with the the way that the the face is modeled it's very it, it gives a good look of a, a good action look like she's looking up at something that might be a pro flying in towards her like a dragon or some other kind of big monster and she's and she's defending herself against it so Thank you again for watching. Thanks also to all my new subscribers. Really love it when I get comments on what you guys think. If if this kind of format is inspiring to you and and if you think there's anything I should change or what I should do next, I really take it all into account. So, thanks again for all the all the inspiration and all the motivation to keep me going. Hope you guys liked it and stay tuned for more.